Our dear viewers and listeners, we greet you all in the precious and wonderful name of our Lord Jesus Christ. This is the day the Lord has made. And we shall rejoice and be glad in it. As usual, today is our Bible study day. And we welcome you to today's Bible study from Dominion Church International. Please invite somebody to join us. As we explore the book of Romans. And you are going to have a wonderful time in the presence of the Lord. So, before we begin, as usual, let's open with a word of prayer. Let's pray. Father, we thank you. Yes, Lord. We acknowledge your presence. Yes, Lord. Your love. Mm your spirit of wisdom and revelation in our midst. Yes, Lord. We thank you for the entrance of your word gives life. Yes, Lord. It gives light. Mm. It gives understanding. Mm. We open our hearts to receive that word that is able to bring salvation. Yes, Lord. Even as it goes forth, mm. let it be accompanied by miracles, signs, and wonders. Yes, Lord. We thank you, King of Glory, mm. because you are following your word mm. to fulfill it. Yes, Lord. In Jesus' name. Amen. 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 So our text today is in the book of Romans, chapter 6, we begin from verse 1 to verse 7. The Bible says, what shall we say then? Shall we continue in sin that grace may abound? Certainly not. How shall we who die to sin live any longer in it? Or oh, do you not know that as many of us as were baptized into Christ Jesus were baptized into his death? Therefore, we were buried with him through baptism into death. That just as Christ was raised from the dead by the glory of God, the Father, even so we also should walk in the newness of life. For if we have been united together in the likeness of his death, certainly we also shall be in the likeness of his resurrection. Knowing this, that our old man was crucified with him that the body of sin might be done away with, that we should no longer be slaves of sin. For he who has died has been freed. Today we will look on the subject of the new creation realities. Basically looking at what has happened to us. Or what happened to us when we believed. I, I liken it to what Paul told the disciples that he met in chapter 19 of the book of Acts. He asked them, did you receive the Holy Spirit when you believed? Basically, when we come to Christ, we come as we are. 
But we don't remain as we were. There is something fundamental that happens to us. There is something radical that happens to us that completely separates us from who we were then. And that is where we draw the term sanctification. There is a clean cut from who we were to who we are now. Last week we learned that sanctification is drawn from the act of getting something and cutting it into two pieces. Basically, when we come to Jesus Christ, we are justified. But those that he justifies, he sanctifies. And what it means, there is the negative bit and there is the positive bit. The negative is what we are sanctified from. The positive is who we are sanctified to. So we are not just cut and left there. We are severed from from sin, from death, from the devil. And we are sanctified to God. To the Lord Jesus. And to the divine purpose that God has destined for our lives. We covered that in detail last week. But I want us to see something as we develop this subject further. I believe every one of us has in some way on their journey in life met somebody whom you could not quite recognize and, and they are trying to explain themselves and they say, it is me and you're trying to recollect in your mind how come they know me but, but I can't quite figure out where I met them in life. And what has happened? It is because over time, there is something that has happened about them. And finally, when you recognize who they are, like a light is turned on, and at that point you are able to understand, oh, this is you. And often it is followed by the next question, what happened to you? Possibly they have put on weight. Or they have lost weight. Or they have grown much taller. Or they didn't have a mustache and they now have a mustache. Basically, something about them has completely changed. That they're hardly recognizable from the person that you actually were with, grew up with, or stayed with for a particular spell of time. And, and that same question is what we're looking at here. When we come to Jesus Christ, we are barely unrecognizable in the spiritual realm. Now we need to understand what happened to us. So here is what we will look at. And we will give you seven realities of what happened to us. Because when we come to Jesus Christ, when we believe in the Lord Jesus Christ, we become a new creation. Now we will need to break down what does new creation all mean. 
chitegeza chu kube chitonde chitia. And we will break out the realities of who we have become. Tugenda kutegerejo vidi wabije tuafuka. Basically, all clinging on one concept. Nga vyo na vizi mbidwa kuchintu chimuchito. Our union with Jesus Christ. And that is a very important aspect of our salvation. And there are so many others and we will look at them in detail as we go further into this book of Romans. But for today and next week, we will look at these realities of us as a new creation that come as a result of our union with Jesus Christ. But before we go through that systematic route, and it's going to be heavy, we have seven realities to take you through. And all these seven are contained from verse 2 to verse 7 of chapter 6 of the book of Romans. But before we get to the detail of that, there are some initial observations I want us to have in the back of our minds before we dig deeper. And the first one is that if you are a believer in Jesus Christ, this change that we talk about has already taken place in your life. It is not something that is currently happening to you. No, it is something that has already happened. So this is, second, it is not an alteration of who you were. That is going to gradually happen. And, and then finally be consummated in the future. So everything that we are talking about concerning our union in Christ has already happened. It is that radical change that happened when you were converted to Christ. Secondly, everything that we will discover in this passage as we go along happened in one moment. It is not a gradual step. This spiritual reality transpired the moment you were regenerated. And so it's, it's not like it will happen when you do ABCD. It is not about you choosing what will happen when it will happen. So this transformation happened to you the day you gave your life to Jesus Christ. Which is very important for you who has not given your life to Jesus Christ. Please hang on at the end of this ministry. We shall give you this opportunity for this to happen in your life. The third observation that I want us to have at the back of our minds is that this change or this spiritual conversion produced a radical transformation 
ya zala enchuka chuka etali ya bulijuu. In your life. Mubula, mubula. And this applies to every believer. On the face of the earth. Irrespective of sex. Irrespective of color. Irrespective of background. Irrespective of status in society. Irrespective of achievements in life. When we come to Jesus Christ. This spiritual conversion. Happens to everyone every one of us. So it did not just make a small contribution to who you were. It did not slightly alter who you were before. It brought life, an entire set of life. So you became different from who you were before. Number four. Every aspect of this spiritual transformation is based on this fact that you and I that have believed on the Lord Jesus Christ have been united with him. So it is not believing and leaving him there. It, it is not going to church and then leaving him in church and going home. It is not going to church and then leaving him in church and going home. It is not going to church and then leaving him in church and going home. and then put him off like a piece of cloth. Or like a medal or like a chain you would put on. Or like a medal or like a chain you would put on. Or like a medal or like a chain you would put on. No. 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 When you come to Jesus Christ, Christ, you are united with him. And this is what he talks about in John chapter 14 and verse 20. You become one in him. And him in you. And these are two aspects. So, Every true believer in Jesus Christ becomes one in Christ Jesus. So, and this is the basis, this is the foundation of everything on which we are built. So, whatever is true of Jesus Christ is true to you. Whatever Jesus represents, you become. So you are because he is. You have because he has. And he has given. You. So everything you are before life, before the devil, it is before God, it is because he is. You become a child of God because he is a child of God. You have salvation because he has given salvation. You have joy because he gives joy. You have the peace of God because he gives the peace of God. So everything you are is because he is. Everything you have is because he has given. He is with you. He is in you. And you are in him. And this is an accomplished reality.
Chino chako le wadaka tiche tulimu. So everything he has accomplished. Buri che ya tu kiliza. Becomes a reality in your life. Chifu kachi chichabuli wamu bula mubu. Let me say it again. Everything he has accomplished. Buri chintu che ya tu kiliza. Becomes a reality in your life. Chifu kachabuli wamu bula mubu. So if on the cross. By his stripes, you are healed. Healing becomes a reality in your life. If his death brought forgiveness of sin, forgiveness of sin becomes a reality in your life. So if his life, he purchased the blessing of God for you. The blessing of God becomes a reality. The blessing which makes rich and has no sorrow added to it becomes a reality in your life. So we will now break down these seven realities which became true for you when you were born again. And this is what our text addresses. The first reality is what we encounter in verse 2. It's Paul asks a question. How shall we who died to sin live any longer in it? He asks this fundamental question. But there is an assertion in this question. There is a truth he wants to bring to our attention. And the truth is that you died to the reign of sin. Let's say it again. You died to the reign of sin. So sin no longer reigns in you. So what that means is that our union with Jesus Christ means that we die to the reign of sin in our lives. And this is a fact. It is a statement of fact. But it is also an accomplished reality. Every born again believer in Jesus Christ has died to sin. Paul says, how long, how shall we who died? And I want you to note the plural. So we here refers to every believer in Jesus Christ. So every believer in Jesus Christ died. And this death is the death of the reign of sin in the life of everyone that is born again. If you will recall in the previous chapter, which is chapter 5, verse 21, we saw that sin reigned in death. So, believers in Jesus Christ have died to the rule of sin in their lives. Now, this doesn't teach perfectionism. No, we are not trying to say 
te tugambye that you will be sinless nti toli toli toina chibicho okoze in this life to jakudda mukola chibicho namu bulamu no siche tugamba what we are trying to say chino che tugamba is that sin no longer dominates e chibisi siche chicha afuga so sin no longer orders you kate chibisi che chikula gile okola yes you there may be a moment when you miss it but it is not out of habit no because sin no longer has dominion so it is a death that removes the dominance over the life of a believer. Or if I may put it, it is the death, the tyranny of sin. Over the life of a believer. Or putting it another way, the dominion of sin over every Christian's life. Has been broken. The control of sin over the life of a believer in Jesus Christ. Was broken. You see before you converted. Before you became born again, there was nothing you could do about sin. Or there's nothing you could do against sin. Everything you did was for sin. Everything you did was to propagate sin. Your walk, your works, your thoughts, everything was funny. Promoting sin. And you did it with a lot of glee, with a lot of joy. And it has happened to every one of us. Before we convert to Jesus Christ. But now that you are born again. Or the day you become born again, you die to the reign of sin. At that moment, everything concerning sin becomes the past. There is a severing. And now you begin a new life in union with the person of Jesus Christ. So the old is cut off at that point. And then you have a new union with the person of Jesus Christ. Now you live with the domineering power of the Holy Spirit. And it is impossible that now you have the domination of the Spirit of God in your life. That sin now comes to dominion in your life. And here Paul brings this reasoning. And says, if you died to the reign of sin, then you cannot continue to live in it. Because it is no longer dominating in your life. So what does it mean by continue to live in sin? It means several things. Number one, it means to live for sin. So everything you're doing, you are, you are there to fund, you are there to sponsor, you are there to ensure that it is going forward. 
So that can't happen. Secondly, to live in sin is to be consumed with sin. So everything about you what you see, what you hear, what, what you meditate on, you are totally consumed with sin. So to live in sin also means to be gripped by sin. So it's like you are now being controlled, like you sit down and have a remote control. You determine which channels you can watch. You, you can flip all of them through back and forth. You can decide that you watch this for two minutes and switch to another. Why? Because the remote control is in your hand. So when sin has the grip, sin has the remote and determines where you go, how long, what you do, where are you. Come here, go there. So here it has a grip over you. So to live in sin also is to have a habitual lifestyle. So everything is done out of habit. And it is impossible. It is impossible for every true believer in Jesus Christ. Born again. Filled by his spirit. To continue to live in sin. Secondly, so that is the first reality. And the first reality we have seen, and I want it to register in your mind, that the moment you come to Jesus Christ, you died. Not you are dying. Not you will die. You died to the reign of sin in your life. So you cannot live in it any longer. Let's look at the second reality, which is in verse 3. Look at what he says. He says, do you not know that as many of us as we are baptized into Christ Jesus were baptized into his death. The second reality is this reality we see here. You did not just die to the reign of sin in your life. But you were baptized into Christ. So you were united. When we talk about the union with Christ, it means that every believer Every genuine believer in Jesus Christ has been baptized into Jesus Christ. Now, being baptized into Jesus Christ means you were placed into Jesus Christ. At one point of time, you were not there. But at a certain point in time, you, you have, have now been, been brought into Jesus Christ. I want you to recall our previous expose on this. We talked about two persons. The first Adam, Adam and the last Adam. And the last Adam is Jesus Christ. So all of us 
are born under the first Adam. Now this is what happens. When you are born again, what has happened is that now you are moved from the first Adam and are now placed in the last Adam. So now you come into Jesus Christ. You are baptized into him. So you pick on his nature. Because baptism is where we get the word baptizo. Baptism means immersion. Now, for us to understand this, you have to go to the art industry of the people or the people who deal with batiks or clothes and dyes. So, what they do when they want a particular color of clothes? Let's say red. They will get a, a red dye. Afuna, afuna lange ne ye e miufu. I place it into a solution. Najiteka, najigata. Then get a piece of cloth. Na kuato lugoye. And immerse it. Na lunyika. Into this da solution. Munda mulange. What happens is. Chino chechibawo. This cloth picks up. The color of the solution. So if it was a red solution, then you will now have a red cloth. So from that point onwards, this piece of cloth will no longer be referred to based on its previous color. It now has a new color. It has now a new identity. And from that point onwards, it will be referred to based on the nature it has attained. In the same way, when the Bible talks about us being baptized into Christ Jesus, we are immersed in Him. And we now pick on His identity. So this union with Him gives us a new identity. And that's why the writer talks about us being baptized into Christ Jesus. And he asks a question, don't you know or do you not know so what he's trying to say, this is something you should know. This is something the early Christians knew. So he is actually reminding them of what they already knew. And he's bringing it to our attention today. To the fact that we ought to know that when we we are born again. We have been baptized into Christ Jesus. Now it brings the second question. What baptism? The water baptism or the baptism of the Spirit? See, a lot of people mistake in the two. But these are two different aspects or disciplines. So, and when you read this text, it clearly shows there is not even one drop of water in this passage. So this clearly talks about this baptism of the Spirit. So when he talks about being baptized 
into Christ Jesus. This refers to the baptism of the Spirit. And there are very many references to this baptism in Christ Jesus. Colossians chapter 2.12 Ephesians 4 5. 1 Corinthians 12 13. All these point to the baptism of the Spirit. So, Spirit baptism or baptism of the Spirit is when a believer is placed in Christ Jesus. You are placed into Christ. So you become one with Christ. And so that what is true for Christ becomes true for you. Let me say it again. When you are blessed in Christ, when you are baptized into Jesus Christ, you pick on Christ's identity. So what is true for Christ Jesus is true for you. So because you were baptized into Jesus Christ, when it means that when Jesus died for your sins, you died to your sins. Let me say it again. You see, Christ was sinless. He did not commit any sin. He did not know any sin. He was without sin. So when he died, he died for your sins. And my sins. Uh, the next week we'll be celebrating, the world over will be celebrating Good Friday. Remembering the day when Jesus died on the cross at Calvary. Thousands of years ago. But the good news here is this. When he died for sins, the day you were born again, God takes you back to that time. You now died to your sins. So you were united with him. So why he died for your sins? You died to your sins. So we died with him. So the result of this is that then we die to our old way of life. So to be baptized with Christ now means you are placed into union with Christ. You are in Christ Jesus. So you are into Christ Jesus. You are immersed in him. So you have been transferred from being in Adam now you are in Christ. So you, your union with Christ is so intimate is so close that when he died, you died. And this is the fact that is being brought. That the grace of God, you were taken back blessed with Jesus in his death now made one with Christ in his death that when he died you died 
That is the vital union we are talking about. See, and when we understand this, it is liberating. This is the central truth that governs our salvation. Our, our union with Christ Jesus. In him, you are found in him. And him in you. So throughout, we see all this throughout the writings of Paul. When he talks about our choosing, he says we are chosen in Christ Jesus. <laughs> So our choosing was not based on what we have achieved. On what we are capable of. Or based on our background. Or based on merit. Our choosing was based on him. So we are chosen in him. Even our predestination. We are predestined in him. Even our redemption. Our being purchased from the slave market of sin. We were redeemed in him. We had no value. The value is him. So our redemption is in him. Even our forgiveness. The propitiation of our sins is in him. So forgiveness, which comes through the shedding of blood, comes not based on what we have done or what we do. Our forgiveness is in him. Even our being made alive, we have life because he is life. We have life. He says, I am the resurrection and the life. He has made us dead. He has brought us to life. And he has given us this life. So we have life because he is a resurrection. Brought us from the dead. And because he is life. He gives us that life. We are because he is. And because he has given. And he just has not given us this life, but also our enthronement. Is because of him. Is found in him. You say we admire royals. When, when, when you read the papers, you, you see a lot of coverage around royals. But you know what? In Christ. You are royal. In Christ, you are royalty. In Christ, you are enthroned. You are enthroned because he is enthroned. The scriptures say he has made us priests and kings and our God. And this is the very reason 
He is called the King of Kings. So he is the King of Kings. We are the kings that he is the King of. And he is the Lord of Lords. We become the Lords. He is the Lord of the Lords. We become kings and he becomes the king of kings. Because we are enthroned in him. And this is the reality of who we are in Christ Jesus. Now, every believer enjoys a twofold union with Jesus Christ. I know you One. Every believer is in Christ. So Christ is on the top. Every believer is in Christ. Christ And to get to the immensity of Christ. Now Christ is in every believer. So we are in him. And he is in us. <laughs> so when we are talking about our union with Christ. I don't want you to forget this vital truth. That in one sense you are in him. In another sense, he's in you. And both are true. Both are realities. And this has tremendous ramifications. Because everything that he possesses huh? becomes your possession. And, and it's not something that is being made up. This is not even Pauline doctrine. This is what Jesus himself taught. And we can go all the way back. Time would fail us. But, but let's look at a few scriptures. John 14 to 27. Look at what Jesus is saying to his disciples. He says, my peace I live with you. My peace I give to you. Not as oh. the world gives. Do I give to you? So look at what I'm trying to say. What he possesses, we possess. His peace, he has given to us. So the peace we have is the peace he has given. Not the peace the government gives. Not the peace society gives. No, the peace he has given. Again in another portion of scripture, John 15, 11. He says, these things I have spoken to you. So that my joy may be in you. And that your joy may be made full. So our joy is the joy, is his joy in us. So the same joy that was with him is the same joy that we have. We possess because he possesses. The peace we have is because he 
has that peace. She possesses that peace. She possesses that joy. No wonder in a certain portion of scripture, Colossians, Colossians chapter 3, verse 3, he says, my life is hid in Christ. So your life as a believer in Jesus Christ is hidden in Christ in God. And then he goes on and says, therefore, when Christ who is our life shall appear, what I want you to see now that you do not just have the life of Christ, but Christ is your life. And that is mind-blowing. So whatever life you have inside of you, it is the very life of Jesus Christ, which is in us and is imparted to us by the Holy Spirit. No wonder in chapter 19 of the book of Acts, Paul asks, did you receive the Holy Spirit when you believed? And I address that question to you. Did you receive the Holy Spirit when you believed? Think about that. Because this has so much coming. This is heavy, brother. It points to the life of God. So, we saw that you not only die to the dominion of sin, but you also were baptized into Jesus Christ. You have now put on Christ. But Christ is also in you. And having been baptized in Christ Jesus, and now being found in Christ Jesus, and having Christ in you, it speaks to a union that is beyond what the human mind can grasp. Our time is fast spent. But we will develop this further. I told you there are five, there are seven realities. We have only touched two. We shall develop the other five. In just this text alone. For you to understand what this all salvation business is about. For you to be able to answer the question, what have you become now that you have believed? If you are there and have never believed the Lord Jesus Christ, he is not the personal savior of your life. He is not the Lord over your life. I am giving you this opportunity. You are a sinner in need of a savior. This Savior is Jesus Christ. He came, lived a sinless life, and died on the cross for your sins. He died on the cross so that you don't have to be condemned. So that you don't have to die in your sins. He died for your sins. So that you can die to your sins. That nature can be done away with. And you become removed from the lineage of Adam. 
and be baptized into Christ Jesus and be hid in him and have his life. That's wonderful news. And it happens in a moment. If you can go before the God the Father, and surrender your life to Jesus Christ. It will happen now. Why don't you say this prayer from the bottom of your heart? And this change will happen to you. Let's pray. Say, Dear God, Creator of the universe, the mastermind of all things. Here I am. I am a sinner. Ridden with sin. Deep in sin. Dominion by sin. A slave to sin. I need a savior. And that Savior is Jesus Christ. I believe that He is my Savior and the Savior of the world. I believe that He is the resurrection and life. Jesus, yes, I come to you. I confess that I'm a sinner. Forgive my sin. Fill me with your Holy Spirit. Fill me with your life. Lead me, Lord. From this day forward. By your Spirit. Thank you. For saving me. Thank you. For becoming the Lord of my life. In Jesus' name. Amen. If you say that prayer, you have been born again. Baptized into Christ Jesus. Sin no longer has dominion over your life. You are a new creation. There is a number on your screen. Please call that number. Somebody will pick up the phone and provide to you the basic instruction on this journey. It's been wonderful hearing from you. And for those of you that watch us every week, we say thank you. Please, thank you for being a part of this wonderful journey. We ask you to get in touch. We ask you to please make a comment. Let's know you are there. And we we'll bless the Lord for what He is doing in your life. From Dominion Church, it's been a pleasure having you. Until we meet again. Say shalom. God richly bless you.